I'd like to call to order the regular school board meeting of the Plaquemines Parish School Board at 6 p.m. on Monday, February 6th at Bell Chase Middle School, Bell Chase, Louisiana. We will have the invocation by Ms. Monica Wirtz and the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Paula Mayer. If you would please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we are humbled tonight at the enthusiasm in this community to serve on this school board for the desire to be responsible for the success of each student, each school in the community. We ask your blessing upon these new board members and ask you to give each one wisdom and the humility to ask for direction in their decisions. Surround them with your love so they can be confident that they are following you in all that may come their way. We know that none of us is perfect, but we ask for patience and understanding as these new board members join with current board members to make the school system great. This we ask in the name of the Father who made us, the Son who loves us, and the Spirit who guides us. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1.03, roll call and declar declaration of quorum. Mr. Roussel. Darlene Damari Turner. Here. James Sauer. Here. Joe Pasevich. Here. Christy Arborough. Here. Michelle Linder. Here. Jennifer Sanger. Here. Bobby Ingraham. Here. Paul Lemire. Here. And Jennifer Sanger. Here again. <laughs> yeah, what? that's twice on there. Jennifer Sanger. <laughs> Shelly. Here. Uh, I'll call for an approval, an approval of the agenda. I'll offer with the following addendums. Um, we're going to defer uh, 3.02, 4.06, 4.07, 4.08, 4.09, 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, 4.13, and 4.14. And uh, if these items are deferred, we'd like to move item 4.16 to 4.04E and move item 4.17 to be listed as 4.0F. Is that it? Do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 1.05, ad hoc and standing committee reports. We'll have the minutes of the Student Services Committee. By? Uh, I'll do it. Mr. LaMare. Uh, minutes of the Student Service Committee meeting held on January 23rd, 2023 at North Transportation Office. Members present were Paul LaMare Chairperson, Christy Alborough, Jennifer Shelley, Jennifer Sanger, and Michelle Linder, alternate. Others present were Superintendent Dennis Roussel, Jamie Sauer, Nico Tesevich, Jimmy Corlone, Ronald Bateman, Monica Wirtz, Sonia Duplessis, and Riley Spire. The meeting was called to order at 5.05. The first item on the agenda was a discussion regarding the proposed revision of board policy JCDB student dress code. Mr. LaMare provided Bell Chase High School student Riley Spare with the opportunity to address the committee concerning the proposed revision. Mr. Spar addressed the existing dress code policy, specifically bullet number five, boys must be clean shaven. Beards and goatees are not permitted. Mustaches are permitted, provided that they are neatly trimmed and do not extend beyond the corners of the mouth sideburns that are excessive or not allowed. Mr. Spire presented his proposed changes to the committee and noted that his concerns are what defines neatly kept if such verbiage is adopted. 
Superintendent Russo expressed his thoughts and provided examples of similar situations throughout his tenure as superintendent. However, agreed with the student that such policies do not affect the ability to learn, but rules are needed. Committee members shared their views, both pros and cons, on the matter. It was agreed upon by the committee to refer the proposed policy. Revisions to the full beard at the next school board meeting, February 6, 2023. The next item on the agenda was a request to update the district's AED policy and procedures manual. Ms. Wirtz explained that the request to move the unused AED machine from BCO, the unoccupied Belchase Central Office, to the Belchase High School baseball field. There were additional questions asked by the committee members and concerning the number of AEDs at each school and other facilities throughout the district. Superintendent <clears throat> Russo informed the committee that he would contact Nurse Becky concerning the additional questions and provide response as soon as possible. There being no further discussion, the meeting adjourned at 5.22 p.m. Thank you, Mr. LaMere. Next, we'll have the minutes of the Technology Committee meeting by Ms. Jamie Sauer. Minutes of, oops, minutes of the Technology Committee meeting held on January 31st, 2023 at Woodland Central Office. Members present were Jamie Sauer, Chair, Darlin Demole turner Michelle Linder, and Nico Tesevich. Others present were Christy Arbro, Dennis Roussel, Arlen Dardar, Network Administrator, Christine Cassio, Network Systems Administrator, Monica Wirtz and Sony Duplessis. The meeting was called to order at 4.33 p.m. The first, meeting, the first item on the agenda was a discussion by Ms. Sauer regarding the district's website. Mrs. Sauer noted she had spoken to Superintendent Roussel concerning several outdated documents on the website and stressed the importance of providing current and accurate information to the public. Mrs. Linder noted it is a great task maintaining a website. However, she suggested adding teachers' profiles, information on each school's website, up upgrading student handbooks accordingly, and removing links that are no longer operational. Christine Cassio then provided an update on the newly redesigned website with various user-friendly features, including social media links. Ms. Cassio also mentioned the final stages were near completion and LEO, the district's website builder, is set to provide training to each designated webmaster and others in need of the training. Next on the agenda was a discussion by Arlen Dadar regarding the placement and functionality of school security cameras across the district. Mr. Dadar noted an audit was performed by the tech department at the beginning of the school year on all cameras and DVRs. A report was passed on to the finance department for budgeting, budgeting and ordering purposes. Additional information regarding locations, repairs, and safety procedures were addressed. There being no further business, the meeting was adjourned at 5.32 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Sauer. And next we'll have the minutes of the Finance Committee by Ms. Christy Arborough. The Finance and Budget Committee meeting held on Thursday, February 2nd at the North Transportation Building was called to order by Chairperson Christy Arbro at 5.12 p.m. Members present, Christy Arbro, Chairperson, Bobby Ingraham, Paul LaMere, Jennifer Sanger, Catherine Phelan, Superintendent Dennis Roussel, other members present, Monica Wirtz, Michelle Lindner, and Sonia Duplessis. The first and only item on the agenda was discussion and appropriate action in regard to the renewal of property, liability, cyber and crime insurance policy renewals effective March 20, uh, 2023. Ms. Phelan, CFO, began by stating that the most of the coverage currently in place remains the same. However, there are some small decreases and large increases in property and boiler and machinery insurance due to inflationary factors. Decreases were noted with cyber 35,000 and fleet 145. The increases total 1.429 million. She states that there is an option to reduce. The option would be to self-insure for 379,000. This would be out of pocket in addition to a deductible. We would be assuming a 10% risk. She notes that we would be eligible for payout after the 379,000 out of pocket and 100,000 dollars deductible each occurrence. She also states that we have 12 million protected in an emergency fund. Any use of this money would have to go before the board. Ms. Phelan states 
we are financially comfortable. We do have, however, lots of extraordinary expenses. We have purchased two new buses throughout through the state contract, two chillers, awarded 10% raises to all employees, and are replacing a roof at a school gymnasium. Superintendent Roussel also adds that the bridge by the Phoenix High School is sinking and needs attention. He says we need to watch the budget and make good decisions. Ms. Phelan goes back to the discussion of self-insuring. She says we can always go to FEMA to cover the $329,000. She says if we decide after a year we don't want to self-insure, we can go back. She asked the committee for their support at Monday's meeting. Superintendent Roussel informs the board that the contract to pave the parking at transportation is being reviewed and in the hands of the architect. Being no further business, the meeting was adjourned at 5.22 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Arbo. Next, we'll move to number two, Plaquemines Parish School Board recognitions and or presentations. The 2019-22 term, distinguished school board members recognition, recognition LARS 1753 and we're going to do the 2022 Certified School Board Members Designation, LARS 1753. The purpose of this correspondence is to provide your school board members with recognition as a distinguished school board member for the 2019-2022 term. Louisiana Revised Statute 1753 notes that any school board member that voluntarily completes a minimum of 16 hours of LSBA approved continuing learning units in the first year of their term and six hours of LSBA approved continuing learning units in each sequential calendar year, six or more in 2020, six or more in 2021, and six or more in 2022 should receive this designation. So at this time, I would like to present these certificates to the school board members yeah. at this time. They're both included, Nico. They're both included. Bye, Call that up. It's 
Special Olympics. 2023 Special Olympics update. Ms. Tanya Becknow and Tommy Fletcher. Good evening. Hello. Um, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Tanya Becknow. This is Tommy Fletcher. And um, we have our support group. They didn't walk up with us. But Mary Ellen Hamner and um, Shannon Dyke is our mentor, leader, coach. Um, so thank you for having us. And um, we'd also came here to invite you to our Special Olympics. And I kind of heard through the grapevine, I think y'all are going to be out of town. <laughs> so maybe next year. But we'll, we'll still tell you a little bit about it. Um, it is on Friday, March 31st, and it's down at South Plaque High School. Um, this is a wonderful event. And it's designed to um, specifically for our special needs students to um, get the chance to shine at a track and field event a whole day where they compete against other students of other schools. And um, you know they go through their competitions and then they get to stand up on the podium and awarded ribbons after every competition. You could thank you, Chad, for putting together our little slideshow here. Um, <clears throat> It's just, it's a wonderful event, and just to see all the smiling faces of all our kids, it's amazing. Uh, Sheriff Turlich comes out to assist with our opening ceremonies. They help assist um, with our students carrying the torch. They um, provide lunch for all the students, volunteers, and teachers that come out. Uh, Chevron comes out and has given us monetary aid for many years, and they bring about 10 volunteers, and they run our throws event so they come out and volunteer their time um, and also global venture is uh, on board this year and they have given us a very nice donation for us so we're um we're in the midst of our donation campaign and have been getting a lot of assist you know a lot of donations um also out at the meet we're going to have uh, families helping families the uh greater new orleans autism society the Metropolitan Human Services District, they are all gonna come out and have a table just to kind of present um, information and, and assist our parents with children of special needs to see if they can help them in any kind of way. We've also got the Plaquemines Parish uh, Medical Center is gonna come with their big bus and park out there and give us any assistance we might need. Um, you know, we have our nurses that come out to treat our kids, but we're gonna have them out there in case something happens for uh, anybody else. <clears throat> also, too, um, you know, we look forward to this day. The kids look forward to this day. And when it's all said and done, I'll see my kids the next day, and they're like, that was awesome. When are we going to do it again? I'm like, next year, you know, a whole year away. And it's really, you know, it's like heartbreaking that these kids only get one day to shine. So um, we're trying to do something about that and provide them something all year round. Um, also, too, if you think about our kids, our students that graduate high school, you know, once they graduate, there's no more services. There's no more support from the school system. There's no more APE. There's no more speech. There's no more just hanging out in the cafeteria with friends. It's pretty much all of their social opportunities kind of end. So we want to change that and have something provided all year round. And, and we're focusing on our kids in high school and graduates. Um, and Tommy's gonna tell you a little bit about our community side of our Special Olympics. So our community-based um, program that we're starting, um, it just basically got underway a few months ago. Um, it gives the students an opportunity to continue to participate in Special Olympics throughout their lifetime. So whenever you go to the state level, you might see people in their 70s or 80s participating. So that's one of the things that we're gonna start in Plaquemines, which we already have. We started with bowling. Right now we have four, um, four athletes, ranging from 17 to I think 28. Um, we recently had a beat and greet earlier in the school year in September? Right. September, where they probably had like 20 
individuals show up. So there is a need, we just have to get them registered, okay? So we have big plans, we have a big vision, okay? But we can't do it just a few people. So that's why we're calling on the community to get involved, to volunteer. You know, it doesn't have to take um, hours and hours, you know, a few hours here, a few hours there. It, it truly will make a difference in the lives of so many. Um, we have some fundraisers coming up. We're having a golf tournament, tournament in May. May 7th. May 7th. And we're also going to be having um, a comedian come in this summer. So we're just asking the public, you know, to support this endeavor because it means so much to a lot of different people. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> so either like monetarily we have donations coming in, but also, you know, for coaches. And it could be, you know, we're doing bowling right now and we intend on doing bocce in March where they can go to state and bocce while our um, athletes from school base is gonna, um, we're gonna pick up, you know, we usually take about 20 kids to go to state um, for the track and field. But other sports that are available, we're gonna brainstorm here. I mean, there's powerlifting, equestrian, uh, basketball, softball, softball basketball. volleyball. There, there's something all year round, horseshoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, if we could catch people who could just coach in a, you know, it's kind of like if you think of um, the athletics for school, you got football in the beginning, like everybody goes through the whole seasons. It's the same thing for Special Olympics or seasons. So you can have a coach that might only coach for, you know, about two months maybe in a season for a particular sport. So we're looking for people who might have a little expertise in different areas that we can pick up some of these sports and that these kids can come out and, and learn and coach. And, and, and a lot of it's social. It's right. just for them to get out, get away from home, get out from under their parents' supervision and come on with us and just, you know, have fun. So, anybody have any questions? I do. How many, about how many students do, um, do you have that participate in Special Olympics every year? So, for the school system, and we just did our trials this week and, and got all of our applicants in, we're right at about 200 athletes that are gonna compete down at South Plaque. In the past, we've had close to 300. Our big, I think our biggest meet was about 290. Um, so we, we, it's trimmed down a little bit, but we've also trimmed out some of the younger kids. We changed our age group up because we found that the preschoolers and the younger ones were having a hard time making the trip down the road, and you know it, it was a rough day for them. So we've kind of opened it up to eight years and up, just like uh, according to the state, they take eight and up for the uh, state games. Okay, and my next question is, if somebody wants to volunteer, how do they do it? Who do they reach? What number do they call? Us. Well, I know we didn't come with the, uh, any handouts or anything. They can contact me, T.O. Becknell, um, at the pbsb.org. Um, we do have a Facebook website. It's Plaquemines um, Facebook page with our Facebook email. Um, and we do put a lot of, you know, we post in the newspaper almost every, every time the newspaper comes out, we put in there that we have our meetings. This is for our community base, but it's, it, we're kind of on one umbrella. It's Plaquemines Parish Special Olympics, and we've got school-based, and we've got the community side. So it's kind of all merged together. But we do meet monthly on uh, the first Wednesday of the month at the library at 6 o'clock. So if anybody would like to come in and, you know, sit in and see what we do and everything we're just organizing and you know like i said we're in the midst of fundraising right now so. that's bell chase library yes first wednesday bell chase library six o'clock yes all right what time is the um event on the 31st on the 31st is 10 o'clock to one o'clock opening ceremony start at 10. and i got to open it up last year and i let really the enjoyed games myself. Begin. I loved it. Like the kids were amped. Isn't I was it amped. amazing. Yes, I really enjoyed it. it I just day. make sure to reach out to Penny so we get some volunteers from 
from our school to come over right. and. Um, I mean, you can see the. the and uh, I enjoy Chad's it. got these overhead drone shots. Yes. Are amazing, <laughs> but you know, there, there's just, you know, they go from their events and then we have a once they're finished that we direct them to a fun area where they can get tattoos in their face and um, they come out and just enjoy all kinds of recreational games. Um, I'm trying to think of that coming. I know the Beehive. They're the Beehive now, but uh, Melissa Jordan has come out and brought down a trailer full of equipment for these kids in the fun areas to participate. Like once they're done, so they're not idle. They've got stuff to do all day long, all day through every session. So, all right, we're good. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work you do. It's been a great day. It's a great day out there. We had a great time last year. I, can I say something? <laughs> I'd like to say that for, for myself and for Chad, we started participating because we saw the ads in the paper, and we started just going to those once a month meetings. And I started participating in a fundraising aspect, and I don't know if they're regretting that at this point or not yet, but we're doing that at this point. So our golf tournament is on April 23rd at Stonebridge Golf Course. Uh, fundraising, um, we need help, we need donations, we need items, we need items that you have not, uh, that just sitting around the house, gift cards that you're not gonna be using, donate them to us for, your, for our parade of prizes. We need volunteers to run the golf tournament. Um, if you have any kind of special skills you want to donate for that day. Um, and like they were mentioning, we're going to be also holding a, um, oh, I'm sorry, the golf tournament got moved May 7th. Uh, and the, uh, we will also be holding, we just secured a date for the comedy show. So we have a, com a comedian that's coming in, he's a professional comedian. He is a clean comedian, so it's nothing dirty, um, but he is coming in on uh, June 23rd, and we've rented the uh, multi-purpose building. Um, so buy a table, buy some seats, come out and have some fun in Plaquemines Parish. We're trying to raise some money for our kids and keep perpetual fundraisers going all year round so we can get some athletes to go to the national level and we can do some good for our kids here. No problem, I love it. Thank you. Next we'll have budget versus actuals, general fund and special revenue funds. Ms. Catherine Phelan, CFO. Good evening. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk to you about where we stand against our budget for 2023. Um, I'll start with the grant funds, which are on pages 4 through 39. Most of our grants are reimbursable grants, and therefore they have a zero fund balance, which is a good thing, meaning that we quickly solicit those reimbursements and have been reimbursed. Of the five grant funds that are non-reimbursable, we have a surplus in all of those funds, meaning that revenues to date exceed expenses to date. I would like to point out two items. Um, our COVID-19 grant on page 11, we do have a deficit there, however, we have uh, filed for reimbursement for with FEMA on that one. And then the Community Development Block Grant on page 8 has a $3,000 deficit or about $3,800. Uh, we were notified by the state that those dollars were approved last week and therefore we should have reimbursement within two weeks. For our general fund, i.e. our operating fund that starts on page one and goes through page three. We are doing very well here, very high against budget. Um, this is a good thing. Most of our expenses are within the 50, 
maybe 60% range, which is what you would expect as of January 31st. I would like to remind you all that the general fund is in essence a seasonal fund, meaning that we receive most of our ad valorem tax dollars in January. Our regular operating expenses are $4 million a month. So um, we do expect that the fund balance here will go down. However, at this time, uh, we do not anticipate a deficit here in the general fund for the fiscal year end. I'll take a moment to see if we have any questions. Mr. Tasfitch? You're giving me a lot to look at. I need I need okay. a few minutes. Here. Okay. <laughs> you look like No, I'll have yeah, I mean I'll have I'll have, you know, a page full of questions, but just okay. not at this time. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, if you do have any further questions, Mr. Tesfitch will email me and should you all need any further information, we're always available to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fallon. Thank you. Moving on to number three, board members' time for non-agenda and agenda items. Any board members? Oh, I'd like to um, say something. Mr. Thank Lance. you. Um, first of all, thank you, Ms. Clark and your staff for your hospitality. Uh, the food was wonderful. It's always nice to come here to Bulldog Country. And um, I'd also like to recognize our two former school board members up there, who I love dearly, Ms. Lampkin and Ms. Uh, Martinez. I was gonna call you Bayhai Be Martinez, but it's just <laughs> Martinez. I'd also like to congratulate the uh, Bell Chase um, girls cheerleaders. They were in competition, was it last week? And they won a bunch of honors and they'll be leaving Thursday to go uh, for nationals, and um, so we wish them well and uh, safe travels. And our uh, boys basketball team and girls basketball team at South Plaque have been winning a lot of games, and um, they're going to be in the playoffs coming up in another week or so. Uh, other than that, thank you to everyone. I do. Madam President. Yes. Because Mr. Lemire missed our school, but I'm <laughs> going to let him know that um, our middle school girls went undefeated and won the championship in the last couple of weeks, and I'm very proud of them. Matthew Giles is doing a magnificent job with our girls, and I also want to reiterate that our high school girls are doing marvelous. You know, we won the parish tournament um, back in December. Just have to say that. But they're doing great, and I just want to commend our uh, athletic department for working well with our young men and young ladies. So we're looking forward to playoffs. And uh, I think the state is coming to visit us on the 27th for the, um, that thing we did. I forgot. <laughs> My mind went blank. Anyway, so I'm just proud. I'm, I'm really, really proud of the accomplishment that we're making at Phoenix High School and throughout the parish. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Clark. Ms. Arbor. I'd like to wish the Bell Chase High School wrestling team safe travels and good luck this upcoming weekend as they head out to Bossier City to compete in the state wrestling tournament. Good luck, guys. Uh, and this Mardi Gras season, please look for and cheer for all the Plaquemines Parish School groups and organizations in the parades. They work very hard during this parade season, and we need to show them how proud we are of them in all of our applause by when we're watching them and wish them a safe and fun parade season. Uh, thank you, Ms. Clark and staff at Bell Chase Middle School. Always great to be back here at Bell Chase Middle where I was a teacher for three years, and uh, it's nice to remember those days. And when I was a student, not so much, but uh, <laughs> as a teacher, it was pretty nice. Um, I want to congratulate the Bell Chase High soccer teams. Uh, the girl team, girls team made the state playoffs. Uh, boys team still playing in the state playoffs, and they play the number one seed, Ben Franklin, um, excuse me, I don't remember the date and time of the game because when I was told it, 
Uh, I said, oh, I'll remember that. And, of course, I don't remember it now. But um, I, knew, I know they are playing the number one seed here coming up soon. I'm sorry, Nurse Becky, do you know? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m.? Tomorrow at 6 p.m., Bell Chase Boys Soccer versus number one seed Ben Franklin. Go check them out. It was just a World Cup. Everybody likes soccer right now, right? Yep. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Any others? I'll go. Um, thank you, Mrs. Clark and Bulldog staff for hosting tonight. I'd like to give a shout out to Jace Lukowski and Drake Breland from Bell Chase High School. They're part of um, the running Cardinals and both have just advanced to the state meet in Baton Rouge on February 18th. So go Cards. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Clark, for your hospitality and staff. Always appreciated. The dinner is always great here. Um, with that, I'm always the last to go. I was always the last at the end of the table in District 9. Now being the school board president, I'm the last to go, so everybody always, always say, says everything before me, so here we are. We'll move on to item 3.01, discussion and appropriate action in regard to approval of the district's 2023 standing committee assignments. Jennifer Sanger, board president. I'd like to make a motion to approve as presented in the board packet. Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Daryl Lynn. I second. Any discussion from the board? Administration? Comments from the audience? We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Hearing, hearing none, the motion carries. Next, we'll move on to item four. Superintendent's comments and reports. 4.01, discussion of the results from the financial statement and compliance audit performed by the public county for Duplice, Haplin, Hogan, and Meyer. Good evening. I'm Lindsay Caleb. We'll call for a oh, Yeah, I need to call for a motion. Right. I make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Wait, we, we, need, we just second, now we discuss. Oh, yeah, that's right. Any discussion from the board? Well, I'd like to hear the presentation before we discuss, if that's okay, Madam President. <laughs> that's absolutely okay, okay with me. Thank you. All right, y'all ready? All right, good evening. I'm Lindsay Caleb with the Planche Reitman Hogan, the mayor. We perform the annual audit on uh, historical financial statements, which are June 30th, 2022. Uh, I believe everybody has received the packet, if that's the case. It's about 150 pages long. It's a comprehensive annual financial report. Uh, what I'm going to do is just try to hit some highlights and just explain the process. And then if there's any questions, I can answer those or we can have follow-up questions since I know it is a pretty lengthy uh, report. Just to kind of explain what the process uh, regarding our audit, we do several audits within one. Basically, the first part of the audit is a financial statement audit where we're looking at numbers, financial statements, balance sheets, income statements, and make sure that everything's reported fairly and presents fairly the financial position in accordance with the generally accepted auditing standards and uh, generally accepted accounting principles. The next report that we do is we look at compliance with laws and regulations. Uh, and then the last report that we do that's within this comprehensive annual financial report is the single audit. The single audit is all y'all's federal grants and it's required by the federal government that you are audited for uh, single audits. Uh, then in addition to the reports that are in here, we're also required by the legislative auditor to do statewide uh, agreed upon procedures, which is a little bit more comprehensive. Uh, so that's kind of in, in totality of how, what we do from an audit perspective. Basically, when you go to, through this annual financial report, I'm not going to go through the details, but I'm going to kind of highlight, like, management, and, uh, management is, uh, makes their statements regarding the audit in the year. That's going to be on page five, and that's called your management discussion and analysis. That's something that the superintendent and administration puts together, and I find it from an a outside perspective that's a very informative, it kind of gives you a summary, because to go through 150 pages is, you know, y'all gonna fall asleep. So if y'all wanna kind of get the highlights, basically you'd look through there. Then what we have is uh, 
the, which I find is quite informative, is on pages 112 to 130. That's going to give you some statistical information that's like within, you know, I think it covers a lot of those areas are for 10 year historical information. So that would give you a different perspective. I know from a, you're from an oversight perspective and you want to get the overview in, in addition to the details, but if you know, you, you, if you came to me and said, hey, you know, this is 150 pages, how can I kind of get the grasp of what I'm looking at here without uh, you know, going into too much detail? Those would be areas that I would recommend that you go through, and that's really the management's discussion and analysis, and then you go through and look at the statistical information. Now, our reports are within this report, and we make a, as part of the audit, we're required to pres uh, give an opinion. And our first, basically, our first uh, opinion is on the financial statements, which is a report on basic financial statements. Our report was un unmodified, which is the highest level of reporting that you can receive, which means that we say that everything's presented fairly in material respects. Then the next report that we have in here is a report on internal controls and financial reporting with compliance with uh, internal controls and if there's any significant deficiencies in y'all's reporting. Once again, our report indicates there was no significant deficiencies reported, no material weaknesses reported. The third report is the compliance with laws and regulations and those are requirements that we're required to follow because of the legislative auditor. Once again, we found no compliance findings. Then lastly, the, as I indicated before, we, for the federal government, because of the amount of grants y'all receive, y'all required to do a single audit. Once again, no significant deficiencies are reported. Now, we do come you know, within our scope, because we got a team that com comes out here and we kind of go in detail. We do have comments, but none of them rose to the um, level that required reporting in any financial reports. We normally have an exit conference, which we've already had with the administration, and there's comments that we went over and everything, you know, just for areas of, for improvement, and all that was handled. Uh, then within this report, if you said, what is this based on? How do y'all come up with this? If you look from pages 19 through 30, that's going to be a significant accounting policies. And it's pretty lengthy, but it explains how do we come up with the reporting uh, that we do within this financial statements. Ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, because of the administration, they do such a good job. This report is submitted and has always uh, won awards of excellent in reporting. So, I mean, obviously it's following all the generally accepted standards that are required. Uh, then, as I had indicated, they got required supplementary information within there. Now, getting into the details of the financial statements, the numbers, they had, the first one is your statement of uh, net position. That is, a, there's basically two types of reporting. The statement of net position is on a government-wide, so it looks at the whole power, uh, school board and it looks at it from a government-wide perspective. Y'all had uh, 287 million in assets versus 289 last year. Then overall, the biggest change, and I don't know how, uh, how detailed y'all are gonna get within y'all's review, but ultimately, the net pension liability dropped last year from 78 million down to 37 million, which is a significant decrease in liabilities for the school board, and mainly that was re because the uh, pension plan uh, investments basically in, during this period of time improved, so there was a gain on investments. So ultimately, that's a liability that you're required to report in your financial statements, even though you're never going to repay it, you know. But it is something that affects your government-wide financial statements. Uh, then the next level was the other post-employment uh, benefits, which was another decrease. Basically, it went down by six million. So overall, there were some positive trends uh, from the net position. Government-wide in your overall change in net position, where many of y'all would, if I said net income instead of change in net position, basically the school board improved 20 million bucks. I mean, for 2021, we were showing nine and a half million dollar loss. 
This year was showing $9.9 .9 million profit. So ultimately, it's about a 19.5 million increase in um, profitability. And the two main reasons, sales tax went up about 8 million point two, and grants and contributions went up 8.4 million. And the sales tax were mainly because of the natural gas plan. And then the uh, uh, grants are just mainly because you receive more grants. Then the other perspective is another part of the financial position here is you, in uh, reporting, instead of government-wide, you look at individual funds. This is kind of the old perspective. And basically from a government-wide fund, I mean, a fund financial statements, your net income went up by five, uh, by 5.3 million. So once again, another positive trend. So, you know, I think overall, it's a you know, very good report, uh, very, uh, no findings, and uh, you know, are there any questions? Since I got ahead of myself earlier, any discussion from the board? Um, just like with Ms. Phelan earlier, Ms. Phelan earlier, I'll have a lot of questions, but we'll, we'll save those for another time. I did have a couple uh, things to point out to my fellow board members. If you look at page 120, that shows the, uh, the highest taxpayers in Plaquemines Parish for new board members. That is a question you'll get from time to time. Uh, whoever, I'm sorry, I'm in the CAFR. If you're not in the CAFR, the, um, yeah, the big thick one, the annual comprehensive financial report. Um, and then also on page 130, it shows the enrollment and square footage, uh, at each of our schools, as well as when it was built and improvements. Sometimes that's a question you'll get from the public. Um, but Mr. Lindsay, I do, I do appreciate y'all's work um, uh, going through this and, and giving us that positive rating. Um, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to look through. So thank, thanks to you for going yeah. through our books. Thanks to you, Ms. Phelan, for continuing to uh, manage our books and Mr. Russell for being tight with the purse strings. So, uh, you know, we're operating at, at, at good levels, good solid levels. And you did recognize, like, those pages that you pointed out, that 112 to through, through 130 was what I had pointed out earlier. Yes. That's really, you know, from y'all's perspective, like, information that's useful that you can kind yeah, of grasp yeah. on. I, a lot I of love numbers. Stuff is, I, I love numbers. Yeah. So, I mean, I could look at this, you know, for hours and hours on end. Like earlier you said, oh, it'll put you to sleep. It ain't going to put me to sleep. I like this stuff. But, uh, but no, it, it is a lot of good information, and it's good to have whenever you're answering questions for constituents. Yeah, that's why when I looked at it, I kind of think from your perspective, you know, the MDNA, which is the management discussion analysis, and the statisticals information pages are the best, you know, informative part of the whole thing. So, and I'm welcome, you know, you can always call me or anything if you have any specific questions. Any other board members? Administration? Any comments from the audience? We'll call to a vote. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Discussion of appropriate action regarding the approval of public accounting firm, Duplishin, Haplin, Hogan, Meyer, LLP to perform the audit for 2022-2023, Ms. Phelan. So offered. Second. I'm here to ask uh, that you all approve uh, DHHM uh, as the accounting firm for the 2023 audits, both for the financial statements and for the state agreed upon procedures. And these will have to be signed by Mr. Roussel and Ms. Sanger. Any discussion from the board? Yeah, I have a, um, and again, I, I, I've done a couple nonprofit audits, so I know what work goes into it, and that's just for nonprofits. That's not something like this, um, which I know this is very extensive, but I have to ask the question because I'm on the board. On page 13, it shows what our fee's going to be for this audit. Do we know what our fees were previously in the previous two years for doing the audit? Uh, this most recent year, it was at 90000 Okay. So last year was 90000 Were you increasing to 91950 
That sounds about right, correct. That's okay. For 2022, it was 90,000. Yep. Yep. I think DHHM does a great job. Um, I think it, it's reasonable for them to only go up uh, less than $2,000 on the fee for us. Any discussion from the administration? Comments from the audience? We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, board. Discuss appropriate action in regard to the renewal of property, wind, casualty, and other casualty insurance policies for effective March 1st, 2023, Ms. Phelan. We discussed in our finance committee meeting this need a past. Motion. Need a motion. Oh, Thank we you. We do need a motion. I'm sorry. I was flipping my packet. I make a motion. I'll second. Thank you. Per our discussion in the Finance Committee meeting this past Thursday, uh, we talked about the increase in our insurance renewal. And essentially, most of the increase is due to property and boiler and machinery, which goes hand in hand with your property because it's the mechanisms that run the, the buildings. Those increases are essentially due to inflationary factors. We did have some minor decreases in cyber and our automobile coverage or our fleet coverage. Per the literature that was distributed to the board, uh, our representatives from McGriff Insurance, and I'd like to take a moment to introduce them. Uh, we have Mr. Joe Blossie on the left, Ms. Danica Ansardi, and Mr. Calvin Shaw, who worked very hard to get some quotes. And as you can see from this handout, most of the carriers denied. This has been in the news it's a problem for everyone. When we met with McGriff, they did propose an option to reduce the coverage from 1.4 million to roughly a million by the district assuming a 10% self-insurance, i.e. we would take on 10% of the risk. Now that would be on top of the $100,000 deductible for each occurrence. So we are talking about an initial payout of around $400 plus thousand dollars. However, considering the insurance market, uh, we feel it's reasonable to take on this 10% risk, and here's why. As we talked about earlier in our budget, we have some extraordinary items this year. Two buses, uh, two new chillers, a new roof, the bridge now needs some work, and we've awarded all employees 10% raises. We are in a good position financially, however, we need to ensure that that stays the same. And so we are asking for this assumption of the 10% risk on behalf of the school board. Do we have any questions? Um, before the meeting, I had a, a long discussion with uh, Ms. Ansardi, Mr. Blossie, and Mr. Shaw. I had questions about the 10% the self-insurance and uh, they answered, you know, the questions that I had and explained um, that the 10% uh, the self-insurance is 10% that we would pay um, like a co-insurance. If, if you're familiar with medical insurance, it's like co-insurance. I know there's some questions about it, and, and when I was asking some questions, I got some incorrect information, so I thank them for correcting me. Um, but I did, I did have a question about something that I, I just thought of, and I was trying to do the, the back of the envelope numbers here. Is, is there a, a break-even point on this 10% uh, this co-insurance? Like, is there, so like if, if obviously if we choose to, I, sh I shouldn't say co-insurance, if we take the 10% um, the self-insurance 
we are taking some risk upon ourselves. Correct. So at what point, like at what point do we make a good decision? Like if, if the damage is X amount of dollars, it would have been better off if we wouldn't have did it or would have did it. And I'm, try, I'm trying, to, trying to do the math and I'm, 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 I keep coming up with different numbers because I'm trying to do it quickly and trying to do several things. And I may not be explaining what I'm trying to say here correctly, but I know at a certain point it's worth it with damages we would receive to, to, to get that discount on our premiums. What's that point? I have to say I'm a little confused by your question. Yeah, I know, I know, because so, like, I'm not getting it out right. It's, it's that's like, okay. Let me go back to a statement I made a little bit ago, and let's see if we can meet in the middle. Okay. Okay, so on each of our buildings or properties, we have $100,000 deductible mm -hmm. per occurrence. So, okay, obviously they would not pay, meaning the insurance carriers would not pay the $100,000. Right. Then we would have, if we did not self-insure at 10%, or if we did self-insure at 10%, we would have $329,000 that we would have to cover. So essentially, we would be paying $429,000 up front if there were one occurrence. Okay, the way I understood it was it wasn't an upfront payment. It was like... a. a we would pay a dollar on every $10. Is, is That's that... another way to say it. Okay. That's correct. Okay, okay. That's another way to say it. Okay. Because I thought it was, it was, it's not something that we pay up front. It's, it's as the levels go up, we have to match it. For every $9 of coverage, we pay a dollar ourselves. And that's an accurate statement. Okay. I'm coming from the standpoint of we've got schools we have to operate, we have to get them up and running. Essentially, we're going to pay the upfront fees to get those schools operable. Okay. So if we choose to go with the 10% self-insurance option, no, never mind. I've, never mind. I, I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm clear. Ms. Phelan. I'm going to have Mr. Blossy come up here and okay. see if he can clarify this for us. I, I think the comments made thus far are, are accurate. It's, it's a coinsurance effectively depending on the type of loss that it is. If there's $100,000 applicable and there's a million dollar loss, the district will, I'm sorry, the school board will be responsible for 10% of the loss above the deductible and the carrier will be responsible for 90% of the loss above the deductible. Okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm okay. good. Ms. Phelan, you also spoke at the finance committee meeting that there's a possibility that FEMA, if it was a disaster, would take up the costs that we wouldn't have to put out possibly, or some of it. That is correct. However, that is not guaranteed. Okay. And the way FEMA works is once you get your insurance coverage in place, they look at what is covered by insurance, and then FEMA steps into the picture, essentially. But it is not guaranteed that they will cover it. Any further discussion from the board? Administration? Comments or questions from the audience? We'll call for a vote. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. It's yours, huh? Thank you, board. Uh, executive session pursuit to LRS 4217. Strategy session in or action is necessary regarding the United States of America versus Platinum's Parish School Board Civil Action 6671A. I'll make a motion. We, we need it. Yeah. Bobby made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. second the motion. Any discussion from the board? 
Administration, audience, all in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. We'll now adjourn for an executive session. Well, not adjourn, but we'll take a brief break for an executive session. Board members, make sure to bring your packets.
Okay. We'll return back to item 4.04C, return to regular session. I'll call for a motion. I'll make a motion to return from executive session. Second. Um, let it be noted that no decisions were made during the regular session, so there'll be no discussion. During executive session. Did you I said know? regular. I did say regular session during executive session. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so we'll call for a vote to return to regular session. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you, board. Discussion appropriate action in regard to approval revision to the AED. Oh, wait. Oh, I, okay, 416. A resolution of the Platinum's Parish School Board authorizing employment of Hammond Sills, Atkins, Geis, Noah's, and Perkins LLC as special counsel and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Wait, did, did we defer 4.05 as well? No, we just moved it down. Oh, I'm we, sorry. We moved thank these you. items to 4.04 E and F. Yeah. Okay, I'll offer. Do we hear a second? Darryl I'll second it. Daryl Lynn seconded. Is there any. What? Any discussion from the board? Correct. Which is 4.16, right? Yes. 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 Oh, Mr. Russo read it already. I'm he sorry. did read it. Oh, <laughs> never mind. That's, that's what I was waiting on. Any discussion? Board, administration, comments from the audience? We'll call for a vote. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 All in favor, all of po any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, board. 4.17 discussion appropriate action regard to the addendum to the PPSB policy, student transfer policy to include a M to M transfer option and waive the second reading. I so recommend. We'll call for a motion. Um, a second. Is there any discussion from the board? Administration? Comments from the audience? We'll call for a vote. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, board. Discussion of appropriate action in regard to the approval of the revision of the EC clerical bookkeeper, ERSEA manager job description, Ms. Haydell. Motion. I'll second it. Good evening, everyone. So we just made one small tweak to that job description to increase the number of days that this person works. This is due to the financial requirements of the additional grants that we're taking, as well as all the enrollment events that we're having to take on with all the additional funding. We have offerings for more age groups now, so that increases the workload for this person. This will keep us on track for all those deadlines and acceptance letters and fiscal responsibilities to meet those deadlines. Any further discussion from the board? Administration, audience, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Haydell. Discussion appropriate action in regard to the approval of revisions to the AED policy and procedure manual. Ms. Becky Amos. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve 4.15. I'll second. I think I sent an email out. We just we're moving a non-used AED machine from BCO to the baseball field at Belchase High School, which is on um, the 
on F. Edward Avery Boulevard, and it doesn't, it's not connected to a facility, and it is our sole used field. So we are now housing one there in the locker room where it's secure, so in case something would happen to one of the players on our field. Do you Any, have any discussion questions? from the board? I just want to say that in light of the, uh, the events with the Buffalo Bills player recently, I think this is a good idea to make sure we have coverage for our athletes uh, on all the sports fields. So thank you for this, uh, Nurse Becky. And another thing was brought to my attention, just in just FYI, we do use another field in South Park High School, uses the recreation department. I did reach out to them because that is not our sole used field, so it doesn't really belong to us. And I'm trying to work with them to get an AED out there as well. Thank you for that. Ms. Linder. You good. Any other discussion from the board? Administration? Audience? We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Amos. Approval of board consent agenda. I'll, I would like you to look at 5.01, discussion appropriate action in regard to adding a coach stipend for bowling. They have bowling at Bell Chase High, and we're going to give that coach a stipend the same as we do golf. I'll make a motion to approve. Do we, do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion from the board? Administration, audience, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, board. Uh, could we take 5.02 and 5.03 together? Can we hear a motion? So offered. I second it. Who was that? Michelle? Yeah. Any discussion? Board? Administration, audience, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to number six, information items. Do we have any information items? I don't have any comments from the public. We have the special board meeting Monday, February 13th, to take care of Ms. Haydell's uh, items for her budget. It will be at the North Transportation Building at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Sonia. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Any other information items? Okay, we'll move to item number seven, date, time, and location of next meeting. The meeting will be Monday, March 13th, 2023 at 6 p.m. at Boothville Venice Elementary School in Boothville, Louisiana. Item number eight, I'll call for an adjournment. Will someone make a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? <laughs> I was waiting for you. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries.